Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm going to give an overview of some work, some analysis that I am doing with my colleagues Paula Savage and Naima Begum at the University of Manchester on the long-running, deep-seated social, cultural, national divides underpinning the Brexit result. Following the result, there seems to be a, a disciplinary turn in political science towards accounts based in cultural values and identities. Before that, there, there seems to be much more attention paid to the fine details of political competition. And economists have also uh, been very interested in the drivers of the vote, uh, particularly to try and see what the effects of globalisation has been on the vote and whether this is down to trade shocks and so on. And they're beginning to demonstrate how cultural variables mediate the effect of long-run structural change due to globalisation, financialization, economies of agglomeration whereby young, highly educated people are pulled towards the cities, leaving behind um, small towns and the places where they may have grown up. But there is still scope for a good deal more work on the cultural in the cultural backlash. And so we have seen various contributions to this new literature on Brexit. There has been a good deal of work on attitudes towards immigrants and immigration policy associated with people like Matthew Goodwin. The left behind, who are often equated with the white working class or older men, spatial divergence and cultural backlash, and Pippa Norris and Ronald Inglehart have done um, work on this um, for the Trump result as well. Anti-establishment sentiment and uh, anti-politics, educational divides and value divergence, and my colleague Paula has also worked on this, but also on national identity and attachment to community, which is what we're focusing on here. And I studied nationalism as a, an undergraduate a long time ago when I was looking at the case of Northern Ireland. And it seemed at the time that you know, we had worked out how to solve um, the, the question of national divides. And so I left the subject behind then, um, maybe about 15, 20 years ago. And as the Brexit um, discussions have emerged over the past few years, I think that people have contrasted you know, good civic nationalism with you know, the dangerous ethnic nationalism which may have driven the result. But I did notice that anthropologist Ericsson said, every social group is like an inverted refrigerator. There is a good deal of warmth within the group and then coolness outside the group. Though John Bruley at the LSE has pointed out, you cannot have the warmth without the cold. I think this idea has been quite attractive in the context of Brexit. David Goodhart wrote a book called The Road to Somewhere, um, where he talked about the Brexit result being rooted in an attachment to local community and family and traditional values. And this is a very um, reasonable uh, source of values and something which you know, should be well understood. Equally, there is Teufel and Turner's social identity theory. Groups give people a sense of belonging. And a good deal of discussion of the Trump result as well has pointed to uh, small town values in America, where people are attached to church, to um, kinship, to um, small um, societies as a source of meaning. So I guess this kind of Gemeinschaft idea. But then there's also social networks and social capital literature in political science, where um, civic engagement is seen as being um, a force you know, if you're good in political um, culture. And that's associated with people like Hutfeld and Sprague and Robert Putnam. And so here we are looking at connectedness to others and to particular identities and to localities. And we look at the effect of national, ethnic and religious identification and their association with the Brexit vote or support um, for um, leaving the EU. The salience of ethnic and other identities, whether ethnic identity matters um, to the respondents in the data set. Homophilous friendships, because it seems plausible that people with diverse friendships are more open and this openness is associated with being more cosmopolitan and less Eurosceptic. Then also neighbourhood effect, and so here we're trying to capture that David Goodhart idea. Are people who are intensely attached to their communities, their local communities, are they more likely um, to be uh, more Eurosceptic and more concerned to have power close to home. And to do this, we used the Understanding Society data set and Wave 8. It is a very high quality sample. It is very largely a face-to-face -face survey, though there is an internet um, aspect. And this 
was in the field um, in 2016 and 2017, so it ran for 24 months and it spanned the period of the referendum. And there was one question included in this survey, which is usually concerned with economics and with social factors, but it did include a question, should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union or leave the European Union? And this has been extremely valuable um, to political scientists, but also to sociologists and economists who are interested in these questions. We find that in the sample, it's 45% um, indicated that they were pro-leave or you're sceptic, 55% pro-remain. So there's some questions about the quality of the sample, but we think that perhaps there were some shy leavers before the referendum, and also that people who were more likely to be sceptic were more likely to leave the panel. Nevertheless, the sample size is really large. Um, it is just extremely high quality compared with similar uh, sources which have been fielded on um, internet-only panels. And we decided to use the full sample. So if we were to be purist, perhaps we'd only look at the pre-referendum period or the post-referendum period because the meaning of the question changed um, once we knew the result. However, we're estimating population descriptive statistics rather than the causal effects, and the full sample allows us to look at more fine-grained variables. We're able to look at ethnicity in a great deal of detail, you know, so detailed ethnic um, categories, for example. And also there's no pre-referendum only weight. For example, so when ethnic minorities were sampled over the two-year period, we can't be sure that the pre-referendum sample um, is representative of the ethnic minority community as a whole. So for us, it made sense to use the whole sample. We do take account of the month of the fieldwork and the month squared. We do see that as the survey was in the field, that over time, responses were slightly more pro-leave, so more you were sceptic. And then we ran a structural model where we looked at demographic variables, and then we were interested to see do factors such as social generation, occupational status, education, and so on, do these mostly work through identification, through religious identification, through a sense of belonging to a community, or are these variables working separately? So we look at social generation, we compare the pre-war generation, the baby boom generation, generation X, generation Y. We include variables for sex and marital status, ethnicity and religious affiliation. Even though Britain is highly secular, there is some evidence that religious background, even for people who identify as secular, did shape um, their vote choice. And obviously it matters socially even in Scotland and uh, very much so in Northern Ireland. Education, by, well, originally by highest level achieved, but then we simplified that to having a degree level qualification or not, and then occupational status. In this case, for this model, we have a variable for professional status or retired status compared with everybody else. Household income, and then housing tenure. We compare social renters and private renters with people who own their own homes or have a mortgage, and then home nation. But then when we add the identificational and embeddedness variables, we ask people, what do you consider your na national ident identity to be? And people had a choice. They could either pick just one identity, so English only, Scottish only, or they could choose English and British, or they could choose English and British and Irish, or English, British, Irish, European. And so here we compare people with a particularist identity, so English only, or Welsh only, Scottish only, Northern Irish only, versus British or other or multiple identities. So this is to try and see whether having a more ethnic conception of national identity um, is associated with your scepticism. There's also a question whether the Britishness was important to the respondent. So this was scored in a 0 to 10 scale, but we divided up between people giving a six or greater and then the others. And this is to try and see whether a more civic um, national identity might be associated with being less Eurosceptic. And then identity salience. There's a range of really interesting questions. Um, how important is your age and life stage to who you are? How important is your gender to who you are? Your ethnic or racial background, profession, education, family, and political beliefs. And then for the model we're presenting here, we selected ethnic or racial background, profession, education, and political beliefs. And we thought the latter three might tap at more Gesellschaft type identities. And then with embeddedness measures to see whether people who are more um, embedded in 
associational life or in the local communities, we use the following. And so these were motivated by the social networks and civil society literature. Attendance at a place of worship, friendship diversity, associational memberships, and here we have a count, and then neighborhood attachment. For friendships, people were asked, you know, what proportion of their friends were of a similar age, race, level of education, employment, a similar income, or the same local area um, to them, so all more than half, about half, or less than half. And for this, we extracted a factor. It seems to have a very simple structure, and so we use that as a measure of homophily, so the tendency to have similar friends. Associational memberships. People were asked if they were a member of a political party, scouts or guides, trade union, and so on, environmental group, parents and teachers association, tenants group, religious group, women's institute, working men's club, sports club, other community, and a women's group. And here we just took account. We did look at the measures one by one. We saw that generally being involved with any association is associated with being, unless you're a skeptic, but except for working men's clubs, where members were much more strongly Eurosceptic. But here we took account. So people who've got a wide range of memberships will have a higher score. The average is 0.6. So this is not you know, a great um, indicator of the quality of associational life in, in Britain. But there are some people who feature 10. The neighbourhood attachment. This is a really interesting battery of questions, which is featured on waves one, three, and six. So wave six was the most recent, and we took that first. And if people hadn't responded then, we took the wave three values, and then we went back to wave one. So agreeing, I feel like I belong to this neighbourhood. The tendency to agree, I would, be, I would be willing to work together with others on something to improve my neighbourhood, that friendships and associations in the neighbourhood mean a lot, planning to remain a resident in the neighbourhood, that you have some friends who can give you advice locally, and so on. So for this, we use this as an indicator of this kind of good heart type notion of somewhereness, so this attachment to community. And we took a simple sum for this and we scaled it. Okay, so moving on. So a modeling strategy, we had a structural model where we had the demographic and religious and national identity variables. So these seem to be ascribed identities which um, are less amenable to change. And then the full model, these are perhaps more chosen identities, so identity salience, neighbourhood attachment, and social network measures were added. So if we begin with the demographic variables, we see that women were slightly more supportive of Remain in our sample. And then we see the generation effects in the direction that we might expect, that the older generations were more pro-leave, um, there was a very slight effect of being married or partnered, so established um, in a couple um, on supporting leave. Then having a managerial professional occupation is associated with Remain, and that effect seems to be quite large. Retired, being retired rather than not, seems to be on the borders of significance, if you can say that. Having a degree level education, the effect there is quite large, that people with a degree um, were much less likely to be pro-leave, much more pro-remain, um, and that effect is quite large. And then we will look next to see how far that holds independently of the associational and community type measures. And then tenure, I think there's been relatively little attention to this so far in the literature. Social renters were much more pro-leave, private renters were also more pro-leave than people who own their own home or are buying their own home. And income, in this model, I think in very many models, individual income, household income, does nothing. If we look at ethnicity, so here we've got quite a lot of detail. Um, so the Irish were much more pro-Remain, and Irish um, residents in Britain <coughs> were allowed to vote. Other whites were um, also pro-Remain. Those of mixed ethnicity <coughs> seem to be as well. Those of, um, and then those of South Asian background seem to be there was no significant difference compared with the white British. Interestingly, we have a large enough sample you can look at the Chinese and other Asians, and they were also more pro-Remain. And the Black Caribbean, Black African communities also. And I think we have just enough in the Arab category to look at this, and they were more pro-Remain as well. And so I find that interesting because I think some of those communities haven't featured so much in the analysis to date. And then if we look at national identity, 
So in the basic model, those who are resident in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland were more pro-Remain than the English respondents. Anglican, or those who identified as Anglican, were more pro-Leave, and there is um, a literature on this. Catholics, who might be expected to have an Irish or perhaps Polish or other European background, were more pro-Remain. We included variable for Church of Scotland, which is associated perhaps with um, you know, a particular community in Scotland, but also in Northern Ireland, but here there's no significant difference. Other Christians, I think in other analyses I've seen that they were more pro-Leave and it didn't seem to feature here. And Muslims, the confidence interval here is really wide, but interestingly it seems that perhaps, you know, if we had a larger sample we might get something more there, um, that the, they are tending and to be more pro remain and then other religion, there's very little we can see there. And so then we added the identificational and membership and associational variables. And we see that they don't seem to affect the demographic variables very much at all. Perhaps they shrink them very, very slightly. Um, I'm going to leave aside the tenure for now because here they're not taking account of the interaction effect with neighbourhood attachment, and so I'll discuss that later. We do see that for degree level education, the effect is slightly smaller, but it seems that the effect um, is pretty much direct. There is an indirect effect perhaps through associational life and memberships, but there's still a very large direct effect. And we see similarly for the ethnic variables that the effects are primarily direct. And then for the national identity variables, here we do lose the effect of being Welsh or Northern Irish compared with English. Here we see no significant difference once we take account of identities and uh, association involvement and so on. We also have taken account of religious attendance and here we see that the Anglican effect still holds but the Catholic effect has perhaps disappeared. And then looking at the identificational and social capital type variables, Attending a place of worship at least monthly is associated with being more pro-Remain, and this is interesting. So perhaps the cues that people are getting at places of worship makes them more um, open or more cosmopolitan somehow. And we see this also for models of immigration attitudes, that those who identify as being a member of a religion but who don't go tend to be the least, the most anti-immigrant. Those who identify as English only, the effect here is quite strong on US scepticism. Those who identify as Scottish or Welsh only, or Northern Irish only, we don't see any significant difference. And the sample sizes here are still, you know, pretty large, so I would have expected to see this if there's something truly there. If ethnic background is salient, so ethnic or racial identity is salient to the respondent, then again, that is strongly associated with support for leave. But it's also saying that Britishness is important. So this idea that a civic um, conception of nationality it might be a way of, so, of moderating Populism, I think, doesn't seem to hold here. And then professional identity salient, educational identity salient, political identity salient, these Gesellschaft uh, type identities, they are associated with being less Eurosceptic, but the effects are not as large as those for these um, ethnic type variables. The number of me memberships, if you are a member of more um, societies, and that is associated with being more pro-Remain. Homophily does nothing, and so I think this is a bit of a blow to the relational um, paradigm, which is really, really interesting. Then we found that neighbourhood attachment, the effect, if we include it as a, the additive effect, if we include it as a standalone variable, it was not significant, and this was a big surprise, because this contradicted some of our earlier work, and also work by Takwing Chan and others, and there's a working paper um, version from 2017. And we thought, okay, perhaps there's nothing there, that when we move from the pre-referendum sample to look at a full sample, perhaps there's nothing there. But then we looked again by interacting neighbourhood attachment and housing tenure to see if perhaps this is something to do with the nature of your um, membership of a locality. Because people who own their own homes, they have made a, a big investment. Those who are privately renting, you know, they don't have so much security. And what we see 
is that for owner occupiers, being more attached to their local community is associated with becoming less eurosceptic or more pro remain. Whereas for social renters, there is no difference by neighbourhood attachment. But for private renters, the effect, the gradient seems to be pretty strong, and those who are the least attached seem to be most um, pro remain, and those who are the most strongly attached they are the most eurosceptic, and that effect seems to be quite large. And I'll just take away the confidence interval so you can see it more clearly. And perhaps this is supportive of a recent paper by David Adler and Ben Ansel, where they argue that populism is primarily a politics of place, and place is a product in part of the housing market. So perhaps there is more work to be done here to find out what is driving uh, the nature of neighbourhood attachment. So to wrap up, we find that ethnic conceptions of national identity really matter, and ethnic salience really matters and explains white British and particularly white English Euroscepticism. But we also see that there's a contrast between imagined community and active or behavioural measures of community. So what people feel um, works one way and how they behave, and the nature of their memberships works another. And we think that housing is an under-regarded channel and there's more work to be done here. Um, the nature of the housing market in Britain has built up over decades, and it's possible that this is you know, one of the drivers of what we were seeing. So we think perhaps this is primarily made in England. It might also be down to homes not being built in England, or the lack of security of tenure, especially for the young who can't um, buy homes in the places where they wish to live. And there are many, many quest questions open from this. Is ethnic salience down to a lack of alternative sources of identification, or is this just an alternative source of value, source of values for the individual? Is it, does it reflect increased particularism more broadly? You know, there are many lovely communities which fight against building, for example, or there are many professional communities which you know, put up the barriers. And how state and civil society failures to promote shared identities played a role. So the summer effect depends on tenure. Attachment to imagined community predicts leave support, but more active community involvement predicts remain support. And we argue that this means we should pay more attention to the socio-cultural aspects of local, ethnic and national identities. Okay, thank you.